Please be seated, folks. <clears throat> Good afternoon and welcome, everyone, to the 80th commencement exercises of Fredonia Central School. I am Todd Crandall, high school principal. What a terrific afternoon to honor this year's graduating class of 2011. This class is especially significant to me as I hold many fond memories over the past four years. Each of you are special in many ways and share a terrific sense of humor, maturity, and responsibility. These unique qualities will take you far in life. Over the years, I've learned in my experience that most successful people be begin with two beliefs. One, that your future can be better than the present, and two, that you have the power to make it so. Often successful people are blessed with good fortune, but at crucial and difficult moments, these successful people have acted upon individual will. And I encourage each one of you to recognize your individual will and act upon it. To each of you, thank you for your acceptance, your guidance, and your hard work. Each year, I remind the graduating seniors that this diploma and education are the key to open every door, the key to stop ignorance, to stop hate and bigotry, and to promote all that is good in the world. I believe the human mind and education are the fundamental characteristics to move society, our progress as a nation, and our future forward. And I remind you that nobody can take away this diploma that you achieved today. Congratulations. To all the parents, the families, and the friends, your presence this afternoon helps signify the culmination of many, many years of hard work. Thank you for attending this afternoon. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the individuals on stage. To my left, Mr. Gary Mahalik, Dean of Students. Mr. Michael Hirschbeck, High School Guidance Counselor. Mr. David Moore, Class Valedictorian. And Ms. Kelsey Ruffino, Class Salutatorian. In the first row to my right, Mr. Paul DeFonzo, Superintendent of Schools. Rear Admiral Christopher Colvin, Commencement Speaker. Mrs. Roberta Coniglio, Board of Education President. Mrs. Rosemary Joy, Board of Education Vice President. Ms. Karen Mosier, Board of Education Member. To my right in the second row, Mr. Michael Bobsine, Board of Education Member. Mr. Thomas Hawk, Board of Education Member. And Mr. David Jambarone, Board of Education Member. And to my right in the third row, our Student Council Vice President, Caitlin Muldowney. I'm sorry, Student Council President. Perhaps that was a bewildered look she gave me. <laughs> Mr. Kyle Scudder, Student Performer. Miss Jennifer Ringler, Student Council President. And Anne Marie Griffith, Student Council Vice President. Welcome, everyone. Members of the Board of Education, parents, Principal Crandall, Dean of Students Mahalik, teachers, honored guests, and fellow graduates. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to Fredonia High School's 80th Annual Commencement Ceremonies. Graduation is the first step toward the rest of our lives. We've grown up at school, from our first day at kindergarten to our first day as seniors. This graduation is the mark of the end of what we've always known and the beginning of the rest of our lives. This is the first step towards something new and exciting, whether it's college, the military, the workforce, or something else. As we now move on into our adult lives, let us be excited about the new things in our life that are headed our way. Let us learn from each new experience and appreciate each opportunity that comes our way. We should be excited about the coming times while also keeping a little piece of Fredonia close to us as we move on. My mother lives by the song, 
You're Gonna Miss This by Trace Atkins. It's a story about a girl who only looks forward, and all along the way, her parents tell her, you're gonna miss this. I feel that this is a great message. We should look forward, but always remember our roots here as hillbillies. So today, as we all go off and start living our own lives, remember the good times, learn from the bad, and appreciate your years here at Fredonia, because you're gonna miss this. So congratulations to our class of 2011, and I wish you luck on all your new endeavors. Members of the Board of Education, parents, Principal Crandall, Dean of Students Mahalik, teachers, honored guests, and fellow graduates, it is a pleasure for me to be able to give this address. Thank you all for attending, for without your dedication, we would not be here today. But why exactly are we here today? As Orrin Hatch once said, there is a good reason they call these ceremonies commencement exercises. Graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. This ceremony celebrates the future that is in store for each and every one of us. While recognizing our past accomplishments, commemorating our successes, and acknowledging our failures. Yes, we've all had our share of failures and regrets. They've become lessons learned, or at least they were supposed to. As teenagers, people count on us to make mistakes. In a way, it's expected of us. So while our parents will always know best, we will continue to make our own decisions and be forced to admit that once in a while, we were wrong. Teenhood is a learning experience, and as teenhood turns into adulthood, we will be faced with new endeavors and challenges. But remember that with each passing day, we become more experienced, a little bit wiser. The past is an extraordinary thing. What are we without our past? Who we are today stems from our experiences, our memories, and the interactions with those around us. 12 years together, two thirds of our entire lives, we spent in school focusing on what we then considered important. In our first years together, singing the Wheelock Gathering song in unison was a no-brainer. Recess was the highlight of our days, and our boundless energy had no need or appreciation for nap time. Bill Nye was the new Einstein, and our biggest aspirations were to be astronauts, princesses, or to just plain never grow up. At that age, going up to a kid you've never talked to before and asking, want to be my friend, wasn't awkward. In fact, it sometimes led to meeting people we can still call our friends today. From bus buddies to prom dates, crushes, and the pressure of trying to fit in, we learned just as much about ourselves and each other as we did about earth science in World War II, maybe a little more. But homework is no longer a single worksheet. People don't always get along just because Barney says they should. And being grounded isn't the worst thing that can happen. Still, we are as prepared as we will ever be. In a world where school and each other is all we know, we have stumbled and helped each other complete a journey that has led us to the beginning of the rest of our lives. Now that graduation day is here, I have begun to realize little things we will all miss as they are passed on to the next classes, just as they were given to us. We remember how we lost our voices at all the home football games from cheering so loud. How everyone chanted FHS during sandstorm at the dances. How chocolate milk seemed appropriate for every lunch no matter what was served. And how we have all worn our hillbilly colors proudly for all these years. And now, as we move on to new colors in a sense, whether it's college, military, or work, just remember to always hold a place in your hearts for the Fredonia orange and black. And to never forget where you came from. So why are we here today? because we are ready for a new beginning. A new chapter in our lives opens as we celebrate the closing of the chapter before, and we must believe that we have been prepared for whatever lies ahead. Good luck and congratulations to the class of 2011. Good afternoon. On behalf of my mother, Rita, my sisters, Mary, Rita, and Maura, my, my brother, Michael, I would like to extend my congratulations to the class of 2011. It is hard for me to believe that 18 years have passed since my father's death in 1993 after he endured a courageous six and a half year battle with leukemia. It is an honor to be home to present the Thomas M. Heary Memorial Scholarship. 
My family remains especially grateful to the members of the community who have generously donated and continue to donate in my father's memory to make this award possible. Longtime former superintendent and friend Rocky Duino wrote our family a note shortly after my father's death. It said, and I quote, high school princip principalship is the toughest job in education on an hour by hour basis and day, and day by day basis. Tom did this job in an exceptional manner for over 20 years. He had the respect and admiration of all students, teachers, parents, and fellow administrators. He always had the best interests of the students at heart and always acted in this manner. He was indeed an outstanding individual in every sense of the word. I remember vividly the conversation between my mother, fellow siblings, and I as we discussed the criteria a graduating senior would possess to be the recipient of the Thomas M. Heary Award. Attributes like humility, honesty, and character dominated the discussion. It was because of these attributes that my dad was able to lead by example, serve the community, and exhibit high moral character on a daily basis. This year's recipient exhibits these qualities and demonstrates excellence in academics and extracurricular activities. It is my high honor and privilege to present the 2011 Thomas M. Heary Scholarship to Kelsey Ruffino. Good afternoon. I'm Sue Staborski, and I'm here with my fellow committeeman, Dennis Beckman, and we'd like to present the Fredonia Education Scholarship Awards. I just want to say that I was given some advice from one of the graduating members of the class, Alexis, who told me to keep it short. She's heard me before, and so I'm trying to do well by her and keep it short. Anyways, um, the Fredonia Education Assistance Fund has provided, wait a minute, there we go has provided financial assistance since to FHS students since 1961. Over the years, we have given $120,000 to students to assist them to further their education. Applicants are judged based on an essay, letters of recommendation, an interview process, academic scholarship, community involvement, and financial need. As a parent of a recent 2010 graduate and a upcoming 2014 graduate. I've watched many of these students before us in many of their activities. So I kind of know already what a great bunch this is that we have before us. But I always find the um, process for coming up with our award winners as somewhat amazing that what our students continue to do. Um, for our first award winner, um, we had three references and in each of the references she was noted to be strong, organized, and balanced. Those are things that will lead her in great places throughout the rest of her life, not just through school. She's a conscientious student, a committed volunteer, and an amazing dancer. This I've seen with my own eyes. She plans to major in athletic training at West Virginia University. Congratulations goes to Nicole Fasso. Please come up. Our next recipient is a dedicated athlete, a top-notch student, a gifted musician, and active in community and church. I recently had the opportunity to spend lots of time listening to my daughter Courtney while she was studying for her Math A Regions. If I have this wrong, you can let me know. But she was talking about probabilities, 
And if you, you know, like if you have a bag with seven black marbles and three orange marbles or something like that, that you pick one out and it's something. But anyways, so if you have an absolute sure thing, it's a probability of one. Is that right? Okay. So when we talked at our committee, we are absolutely sure that there is no doubt that our next recipient has set some sky-high goals for himself, and he's going to be studying aerospace engineering at Case Western University, and we are sure, absolutely sure, that he will meet those goals. David Moore. Did I have that right? <laughs> Our third recipient, and there's four this year, so we're halfway there. Our third recipient has received many honors and awards since at least eighth grade that I know of. The scholarship committee was also impressed with this young lady. We are told in life that to succeed that you need to have drive and dedication for whatever it is that you're doing. Every teacher and coach that knows this recipient has talked about her drive, her dedication, but also her energy, her leadership, and outstanding character. Outstanding character even in the face of adversity. We believe that she will carry these traits as she studies early childhood education at Niagara University. Jennifer Ringler, I believe you're over here. It is my honor and privilege to uh, deliver the uh, last award, and the last award is the Beckman Award, and it's done in memory of my parents, Joseph Robert and Celia Beckman. People ask often, what is the criteria used to choose the recipient of the Beckman Award? And that's pretty simple. It's based on the extraordinary lives of my parents. My mother, Celia Beckman, graduated from Fredonia High. She loved Fredonia. She was absolutely passionate about her village. And she showed that love by volunteering her time and by service to others. She was 25 years a Girl Scout leader, 20 years in the League of Women Voters, 20 years in the PTA, eight years uh, village trustee for the village of Fredonia. She was a, a teacher's aide at Eagle Street. Uh, that was her profession. Um, but she also uh, volunteered her time at uh, St. Anthony's and was a Sunday school teacher. She was an amazing person who just loved the village and loved to serve people. My father, Joseph Robert Beckman, loved learning and loved education, but unfortunately he had to quit school in the ninth grade to help his family support himself and his three sisters. So he had to leave school, and soon after that he actually joined the uh, service uh, in the Army and also of help fight the Second World War. He hit the beach at Normandy on D-Day plus nine and helped set up the first field hospital on the beach at Normandy. Later on, he was a, a guard at a prisoner of war camp and he guarded German prisoners. When he came home from Europe, he already had his family. My brother Bob was already born and he had never seen his father and his father had never seen him. Um, at age, he, he worked his whole life, first as a, in a slaughterhouse in Ripley, and then as a meat cutter for various uh, grocery stores, and just dedicated himself to his family. But he still was self-educated, still loved learning, and he read as much as five books at a time. He kept his going, he's the smartest person I ever met. At 74 years old, my father decided to take another volunteer career on, and he wanted to be an ombudsman with the Office of the Aging, uh, going into nursing homes and assuring quality and fair treatment for the residents there. But the application asked in the fourth question, do you have a high school education? And he was loath to answer no. So he went back to school, found a teacher, a tutor, and he got his GED at 75 years old, and he did become an ombudsman. I believe our choice for the Beckman Award is just as dedicated to help others as my mother, and just has the passion for education and for learning that my father had. It's an honor and a privilege to give that award to Kyle Scudder. Good afternoon. 
In order to assist talented young people who plan to enter the teaching profession, the Fredonia Teachers Association awards scholarships to an individual who has chosen to become an educator. This year's recipient will attend Niagara University. In her application essay, this individual wrote, and I quote, I've chosen this career path because it has been my dream since I was little. This has been my dream because I love helping others and making a difference in people's lives. If I can positively change even one student's life, then I will have accomplished everything I have ever wanted to do. Being a teacher is not just about making lesson plans and standing up in front of a classroom trying to get them to understand the material. It is about making a connection with students and changing their lives. My goal as a classroom teacher will be to try to get my students to realize that they can accomplish anything in their lives if they set their minds to it." End quote. On behalf of all of our teaching staff, I extend our thanks to this individual for her attention to her studies and care and concern for herself and others that she expressed on a daily basis. While her entrance essay contained eloquent words describing her feelings and moral character, it is the action that she has put to these words that makes us proud of her and her decision to be an educator. It is now my privilege to present the Fredonia Teachers Association Scholarship to future teacher, Ms. Jennifer Ringler. Good afternoon and congratulations to the class of 2011. It is an honor and a privilege to represent the family of Anne and Doug Manley today. For over 20 years, their family has chosen to invest in the future of our community and nation through their generous support and encouragement of our students. I am happy pr to present a four-year scholarship in the amount of $1,000 per year in loving memory of their beloved son and brother, David. This generous scholarship is just one demonstration of the Manley family's commitment to serving the families of our community. They have recognized that the students educated in Fredonia go on to change the world. Sadly, Mrs. Manley passed away on November 7, 2010. Mrs. Manley served as a guidance counselor at Fredonia High School in the early 60s and the students remained close to her heart ever since. As the wife of Doug Manley and the mother of five children, she devoted her life to caring for others, especially those who were less fortunate. A gracious and loving woman, she dedicated her time and immense energy to the literacy volunteers, the Fredonia College Foundation, the Rural Ministry, the AIDS Support Group, Trinity Episcopal Church, and many other worthwhile organizations. Each year, just before graduation, we would always speak about the award recipient, and she always conveyed her love and respect for the young people of our community and school. The students selected to receive this scholarship today reflects the best of David's qualities. Foremost are integrity, scholarship, service, and dedication to family. David was a loving son and brother who, who loved music and travel. He was also a brilliant student. One of three valedictorians of the class of 1967, David graduated with honors from Colgate University and Harvard Business School. He served in the Peace Corps before joining Estee Lauder for his career. In 1986, David died a victim of the AIDS epidemic. The Manley family has chosen to give generous annual scholarships to students of extraordinary promise and great academic achievement. The recipient this year is an exceptional student, musician, and scholar athlete. He has participated in the 313 program, the symphonic band, and the jazz ensemble, the varsity swim, soccer, tennis, and track teams, key club, model UN, and he operates the soundboard for the musicals. It is truly an honor 
to present the 2011 David E. Manley Scholarship to the valedictorian of the class of 2011, David Moore. The other day, my husband and I stopped into school to attend a meeting, and I ran into Mr. Crandall. And he said to me that he thought we were the two luckiest people in the world. Now, I, I think that may be true, but I think he was referring to the fact that we were retired and he is not. <laughs> but I prefer to interpret his remark as a comment on how lucky we are to call Fredonia our home. I am struck today by how fortunate we are to live in a community that prepares its students to be successful in the wider world. Fredonia grads can do anything. With the academic preparation, the wide array of activities, and the supportive network of parents, family, and our school community, Fredonia alumni are leaving their marks all over our nation and around the world. One graduate is serving with the Peace Corps in Rwanda. Others are teaching English in Japan. There are software engineers with Apple and Microsoft. There are nurses at Children's Hospital and optometrists in Mississippi. They own and manage heating and plumbing businesses or telephone companies, teach children in Maryland, Virginia, and Florida, create websites for Barnes and Nobles, work as nuclear engineers in Tennessee, the new director of our musical is a Fredonia grad. Fredonia grads care for our homes and our children and have ser served valiantly in our military forces all across the globe. Fredonia provides the foundation for success, the world provides the challenges, and our students provide the determined efforts to succeed. So today, the class of 1967 would like to congratulate the class of 2011 and help you on your way. Don't hesitate to reach out to the network of Fredonia alumni here and around the world for assistance. In memory of our deceased classmates, we have been presenting these memorial awards for 24 years. Because of the generosity and commitment of my classmates to providing assistance to deserving seniors, we intend to continue in perpetuity. It is in remembrance of the following classmates that these awards are presented. Susan Alba Carney, Kirk Best, Perry Chris, who died in the Vietnam War, Susan Gaddert Carney, Angela Genuso Racino, Wayne Johnson, Steve Lyacono, our class salutatorian, David Manley, our valedictorian, Daniel McElvain, Jean Pierce Scott, Robert Saloff, Alan Schmidt, Linda Strait, William Strait, Donald Westling Jr., and our class president and valedictorian, Mark Willett. This year we are honoring Mr. Daniel McElvain, who died suddenly this past July. Dan was a veteran of the U.S. Army who served in Okinawa during the Vietnam War. He and his wife, Rosemary, owned and operated a water conditioning business in Vero Beach, Florida. Dan enjoyed baseball, long walks on the beach near his home, and especially spending time with his two children, Rebecca and Robert, and his three granddaughters. In Dan's memory, we are presenting two $200 awards to seniors of great character and promise. Congratulations to Ms. Carly Polisoto and Mr. Sterling Pratt. Good afternoon, and congratulations, graduates. The POW MIA scholarship is made available by the family of a local veteran and awarded today to a Fredonia High School graduating senior. The family has established the following requirements for choosing the recipient of the scholarship. The graduating senior must be a descendant of a veteran 
and demonstrates a deep knowledge and appreciation of the sacrifices made by veterans during their service to our country. Candidates are selected based on essays written by the student after conducting interviews with veterans about their experiences while in the military. As this scholarship is awarded, the family requests that we take time to reflect on the extraordinary sacrifices made by those who answered the call to fight for freedom. For their efforts and sacrifice helped build today's strong foundation which drives us forward. In the dark hours of war and conflict, America's veterans, POWs, and MIAs answered freedom's call. We must not allow the sacrifices of these patriots to pass from our nation's consciousness. On behalf of the committee, I'm very pleased to present this scholarship to Ms. Anne-Marie Griffith. Members of the Board of Education, parents, Principal Crandall, Dean of Students Mahalik, teachers, honored guests, and fellow graduates. It is a pleasure for me to be able to give this address on such a memorable occasion. First of all, congratulations, class of 2011. We are finally graduating. While I always could begin my speech with an inspirational quote from a famous president, or enlightened philosopher, I would prefer that I didn't put the vast majority of the audience to sleep within the first few seconds of my speech. Instead, I decided on opening with a unique quote that everyone in attendance might still manage to remember as they depart following the ceremony. For my inspiration, I turn to the wise words of the office's top paper salesman, Dwight Schrute. When asked what the most inspirational thing that's ever been said to him, Dwight responded, don't be an idiot. So every time I'm about to do something, I ask myself, would an idiot do it? And if the answer is yes, I do not do that thing. <laughs> you may look at me now and say to yourself, is that really the key to succeeding at life? Well, I'm only in the process of graduating from high school. So you might want to direct those questions to someone like Bill Gates or Warren Buffett if you're looking for a more definitive answer. But in my eyes, this is a pretty significant part of achieving success. Now, if you don't believe me, just look back at your entire high school career. From all your successes and failures, um, you have gained lifelong lessons that will help you as you move on from high school. Whether you've been counting down the days until graduation and are ready to sprint out of here once you get your diploma, or you are extremely scared of taking the next step in your life, you cannot deny that our teachers, parents, coaches, and friends have all taught us countless life lessons. While they were essentially teaching us not to be idiots, they were also showing us how to live up to our full potential. Yes, we may never again get the chance to prank Mr. Newell, swing dance in gym class with Coach Connie and Mrs. Johnston, mess around with Paschke instead of doing math, or go to Darien Lake with Mr. Lauer but we will forever have the lessons they have taught us. These lessons are not just how to solve for X or how to calculate the air velocity of a coconut-laden swallow. They may not have to do with academics at all. Yet, the life lessons they have taught us have shown us how to treat others, how to work hard for something we want even when the going gets tough, and how to make sacrifices in the pursuit of our dreams. It may be easy to overlook the countless benefits of high school now when you are ready to move on to bigger and better things. But when we look back at our high school experience in the future, we will realize how many ways it prepared us to move into the real world. Without these people teaching us not to be idiots, it would be nearly impossible for any of us to achieve success in our future. It may be tempting to look back at these past four years as a complete waste of time 
during which you had to reluctantly roll out of bed at 7 a.m. every morning. But don't be an idiot. Instead, remember high school for its true value, for all the amazing friendships you developed, all the teachers who changed the way you thought, all the athletic battles you faced with your teammates, and all the new experiences that were opened up to you. All these experiences helped develop you into the person you are today, the person who will decide how they will uniquely make an impact on the world. While some of us will move hundreds of miles away from home, and others of us will remain here in Fredonia, we are all prepared for whatever our future puts before us, thanks to our teachers, coaches, friends, and families. We, the class of 2011, have grown up together since our time in Wheelock. Now it is time to move into the world to develop new friendships, seize countless opportunities, and continue to develop our own independence. Yes, the future may be a bit scary, but it has the potential to be just as great as, or even greater than our time in high school. Just remember all the valuable life lessons you have learned during your time here at Fredonia High School. And if all else fails, remember, don't be an idiot. Thank you, class of 2011, and good luck. It's now my pleasure to introduce Rear Admiral Colvin, who is a 1972 graduate of Fredonia Central School 
and a 1976 graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. In 1999, he earned a Master's of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies at the Naval War College. Presently, Admiral Colvin is the commander of the 17th Coast Guard District, headquartered in Juneau, Alaska. Admiral Colvin is responsible for all Coast Guard operations throughout Alaska and the Alaskan Maritime. The 17th Coast Guard District encompasses an area approximately the size of the continental United States and has more coastline than the rest of the United States combined. Admiral Colvin is one of the most experienced mariners in the Coast Guard. He has been assigned to six different cutters and he's commanded three. Admiral Colvin has spent about half of his afloat career conducting fishery patrols in Alaska and the other half conducting drug patrols in the Caribbean. In March of 2003, Admiral Colvin commanded the only surface warship guarding two nuclear aircraft carriers off the coast of Syria during the first night of Operation Iraqi Freedom. In February of 2004, Admiral Colvin commanded a large Coast Guard task force off of Haiti and served as a joint task force, Haiti's maritime component commander, helping to restore order to Haiti following the departure of President Aristide. Highly experienced in coordinating disaster assistance operation, Admiral Colvin co coordinated the largest ever military air evacuation of a U.S. city when nearly 7,000 people were airlifted out of New Orleans just prior to the onset of Hurricane Gustav in 2009. Admiral Colvin served as Chief of Staff and Chief of Operations for the Atlantic Area Coast Guard from 2004 to 2006. In August of 2005, he coordinated the flow of the Coast Guard Coast Guard aircraft, boats, and cutters responding to Hurricane Katrina. His personal decorations include Defense Superior Service Medal, two Legions of Merit, three Meritorious Service Medals, and five Coast Guard Commendation Medals. It's my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Admiral Colvin. Thank you, and I've never followed a marimba before, so this is unique. Uh, it's good afternoon, faculty, family, friends, and administration, and most importantly, the Fredonia High School class of 2011. Could the class of 2011 please stand? How about a nice round of applause for the Fredonia High School class of 2011? Come on, give it up. The longer the ovation, the less I have to spend pot talking. That was nice. Thank you. You guys can sit down. But, uh, and thanks for the opportunity to say a few words today. I appreciate Superintendent DeFonso and Principal Crandall extending the invitation. When I asked Mr. Crandall what I should talk about, he suggested talking about some lessons learned in life, maybe along the lines of late night talk show host David Letterman's top 10. A lot of help Mr. Crandall was. <laughs> I looked up Letterman's top 10 online and you know I couldn't find a single top 10 for a high school graduation. So I had to make up one of my own. So bear with me, but first, I thought I'd point out that I graduated in 1972, which seemed just like yesterday to me, until I subtracted 1972 from 2011, which equals X. <laughs> Any math scholars out there? And then I subtracted X from 1972, which equaled 1939. Sheesh, at my graduation, I couldn't imagine some old geezer from the class of 39 speaking. Thank goodness you don't have to listen to someone that old. 
In few non-math scholars, x equals 29. <laughs> Number 10 on the list. You might not want to believe everything I say. And actually, I wasn't that good at math, although I got by. You know, as a political science graduate, I went to my first job interview and heard that a mathematician applying for the same job had asked for a salary of $30,000. I also heard that the other finalist had asked for a starting salary of $60,000. So I said, how about $300,000? The personnel officer was shocked. Do you know we have a graduate student in pure mathematics willing to do the same work for a tenth of what you were asking? Well, I replied, I figured 135,000 for me, 135,000 for you, and 30,000 for the pure mathematician who will do all the work. <laughs> Guess who got the job? <laughs> no, I did not. The mathematician did. I got kicked out of the office. Number nine on the list, integrity and hard work matter. There is no easy way. Corollary, math matters too. So I joined the Coast Guard. Actually, integrity and hard work matters there too. So does math. Number eight, keep your record clean. Don't get arrested, even for something that seems trivial for you today, like drugs, or alcohol. Bad paper will negatively impact your life and significantly reduce future employment options. I could not have gotten into the Coast Guard with a police record. There's a lot you can't do with a police record. Now, some of you might wonder why I joined the Coast Guard. It was a long time ago when I was walking by a Coast Guard recruiting station when I saw an old recruiter with a peg leg, a hook, and an eye patch. I asked him what happened to his leg. He, he said he got swept overboard in a terrible storm in the Aleutians and was being pulled back aboard the ship when a great white shark bit off his leg quick as a wink. Wow, I said, that sounds pretty exciting. And what happened to your arm? I was matching blades with a scoundrel pirate, and he got the best of me and cut me arm off, quick as a wink. Ouch, I said, that must have hurt. What happened to your eye? Oh, that, the old salt muttered. Some spray hit the side of the ship and got in me eye. An old salt like you, I said, that must have happened a lot over the years. I find it hard to believe that a little salt water could make you lose an eye. Eye, he said, normally that would be the case, but it was the first day with me hook. So number seven on the list, vision is important. Be careful what you put in your eye. <laughs> so the Coast Guard sounded like a great adventure, so I joined, but it was a lot harder than I expected. After four months of training, I reported aboard my first ship, a 378-foot cutter, which was longer than a football field, saluting everything and anyone that moved. Everyone laughed at the new ensign, especially my peers from the academy, who had spent the previous four years learning how to salute. So I smiled and took it with a grain of salt. It takes a while to learn the ropes. Two years later, I was the only junior officer assigned to a highly desired afloat command. None of my academy friends were offered that opportunity. So number six, be humble, be polite. It makes life smile. It makes life a whole lot easier. Among other things, I had to learn an entirely new language. A wall is a bulkhead, a floor is a deck, a ceiling is an overhead, a closet is a locker, a rope is a line, a shower is a rain locker, left is port, right is starboard, and so on and so forth. And then there was a huge engineering plant that each junior officer was expected to be knowledgeable about, if not expert at. There is way too much to learn and not enough time to learn it. Long hours spent standing watches with little time for sleep. And that's where I learned an old Coast Guard saying about how to get the job done when you have too much to do. It's called eating an elephant. How do you need to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. 
Don't just sit there paralyzed by having too much to do. Do something. When you have too much to do, at least do a little bit. You'll be amazed how you can keep rolling once you get started. Eating an elephant is number five on the list. We're almost halfway done. We are. Like I said, I wasn't good in math. OK, class, how do you eat an elephant? Right, one bite at a time. Way to go. Three years after joining the Coast Guard, I was in command of a 95-foot cutter with a 12-person crew. We had surprised a 300-foot ship smuggling drugs off Georgia a day earlier and been chasing the ship out to sea towards Bermuda ever since. No other cutters or Navy warships were close enough to help. The master had bragged that he had a rocket-propelled grenade launcher that he would shoot into the bridge of any Coast Guard cutter that tried to stop him. I had a message in my hand with words to that effect. The ship had previously ignored warning shots and attempts to foul the propellers had been unsuccessful. We were given permission to fire into the ship to stop it. So we fired 50, 50 caliber armor-piercing machine gun rounds into the ship, eventually disabling it. At any minute, we expected the bridge of our small cutter to be taken under fire and blown up. It never happened. The drug smugglers threw their weapons overboard. 30 tons of illegal drugs remained aboard. Now, it was a remarkable case of a cutter team operating in the danger zone at peak proficiency. For the entire time it took to complete the case, I felt completely zoned in, operating at peak performance. So number four on the list, to perform your best when it matters most, get zoned in, get focused. In any endeavor, just like a highly tuned athlete, doing something hard requires total concentration. The world seems to slow down. It's operating at the highest level. Over the years, I've experienced more than a little stress in my various assignments. And what I've learned to do to handle stress is to think about something simple and something repetitive. For me, that's visualizing hitting a golf ball or, or a uh, baseball. For you, it will be something entirely different. Number three on the list, visualize, focus, concentrate on something simple and repetitive to take your mind off whatever is causing stress. Some of you might want to do that now. Pr probably, probably one of my more difficult lessons in life may have been first learned on the football field at Fredonia High School in my senior year. I was a starting defensive end and tight end, but had badly sprained both ankles and could hardly walk and had missed the first two games of the season. In what the Buffalo Evening News called the game of the week in Western New York, undefeated and high-scoring Fredonia was playing undefeated and high-scoring Wellsville at Wellsville. We were scoreless and down two touchdowns entering the fourth quarter. Due to flu and injuries, we had no guards left. So the coach asked me if I could suit up and try to fill in a guard even though I was on crutches and could hardly walk. So I said, sure, the trainers put a roll of tape on each ankle, and I suited up and went in at guard and helped give our quarterback enough time to pass. We scored four touchdowns late in the final quarter to win 28 to 14. This was Coach Ball's first year, the senior. Years later, terrorists had attacked New York City and Washington, DC. I was in command of, a, of Coast Guard Cutter Dallas a 378-foot cutter with 175 crew members. We had been diverted from a Caribbean drug patrol and ordered to take the ship to war. While crossing the Atlantic Ocean, one of our main diesel engines catastrophically failed, kind of like badly spraining both ankles. Normally, that would have meant returning to home port for several weeks of repairs. Ignoring the casualty, we dug deep and powered up our rarely used gas turbine engines and con continued on to Suez to join up with the two aircraft carriers. As a result, on the first night of Iraqi freedom, Coast Guard Cutter Dallas, with an FHS class of 72 grad commanding, was the only surface warship screening two nuclear-powered aircraft carriers conducting combat operations attacking northern Iraq. The other Navy surface warships had all been sent off to shoot their Tomahawk missiles. So number two on the list, you're going to get knocked down. 
you're going to experience difficult times and challenges in life. Getting knocked down doesn't matter as much as getting back up and doing your best. You don't lose until you quit. Keep fighting, be stubborn, be determined, be persistent. Whenever it's really important, don't give up. Don't ever give up. And finally, number one on the list, embrace change. Use it to your advantage. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. Could you imagine what those FHS 39 grads saw in their lifetimes compared to 1972, World War II, the atom bomb, television, or the changes my classmates have seen since 72? Personal computers didn't even exist in 72, let alone microwaves or Microsoft, or even gasp, I know it's hard to believe, iPods. <clears throat> Not long after Mr. Crandall called to ask if I could be here today, I spent a night camping out on the Arctic Ocean ice, 160 miles north of Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. I got to watch a sub come up through the ice, about a football field away from where we were at, which was a remarkable sight, but it was cold, minus 30 degree cold, which gave me new respect for the Eskimos, who have adapted to that brutally cold climate without wood. Imagine living in the Arctic without wood. Fire came from whale oil. Kayaks and umiaks were built of walrus and whale bones, and skins and food were provided by whales and walruses. A remarkable existence which provides great hope for mankind. If the Eskimos can adapt to the Arctic, certainly we can adapt to whatever the future throws at us. So number one on the list, adapt to change. Okay, those are a few things for you to think about as you move on in life. There are other really important things that I left out like passion, humor, balance, moderation, honor, happiness, family and faith, but that's enough for now. I think you all know that your lives are going to get even more exciting and some really challenging things are gonna come at you really fast in the next few years. I hope a couple of those thoughts might help you during the challenging times ahead. I mean, where else can you get advice on how to eat an elephant? So at least for today, enjoy the, mo enjoy the moment. For most of you, as it was for me, graduating from high school is the first really big thing in life. Your teachers and coaches and friends and family have given you a great basis to move ahead and do great things with your life. Work hard, be humble, be persistent, stay out of trouble, and embrace change, and I'll guarantee you'll be successful. Oh, and one last thing. Watch out what you stick in your eye. Arg. of 2011. I wish you all the best. Fair winds and following seas. Thanks. Faculty and staff, Principal Crandall, Dean of Students Mahalik, members of the Board of Education, honored guests, family and friends, and fellow graduates. As our high school careers have come to a close, a brand new chapter of our lives is about to begin. As we look back on these last four years, we can all think of something that will forever st stand out in our minds and be remembered as one of the best times of our high school experience. For some of us, it was an athletic accomplishment, a musical performance, or an academic achievement. No matter what it was, we all know the amount of hard work we put in, the practicing, studying, and dedication we all have. Now that we will leave today as graduates of Fredonia High School and no longer students, we must always remember our roots and where we have come from. Over these past few years, we were not only classmates, but friends, teammates, and have become more like a family. 
Over time, we have grown with each other, and although we may have our differences, at the end of the day, we will always be the FHS class of 2011. We have been through a lot together over these last four years. We can finally say we made it through the good, the bad, and the ugly. We have sat through countless hours of classes and thought, what do I need to know this for? Now that it is all said and done, it doesn't matter how many times we have had to use the quadratic formula, or how many speaker summaries we had to write, or even how many times we have tried to use the excuse senior minute to get out of class early. All the information we have stressed ourselves out over trying to memorize, or even the information we may have missed due to a very long scavenger hunt and couldn't keep our eyes open in class the next day, all has had a special meaning behind it. While we thought our teachers were giving us homework just to torture us or make us sit through information we didn't think was useful, they were simply just trying to teach us the meaning of life and how to become responsible young adults and how to be prepared for the real world. And to all of our teachers and parents, thank you for getting us to where we are today. We couldn't have done it without you. As we reflect back on our time at FHS, I know there are some mixed emotions. We have waited 18 years for this day, and for some of us, this day couldn't have come soon enough. For others, including myself, this was a day that I knew would one day come, but never thought it would come so soon. If you asked me four years ago what I thought senior year would be like, I would have never guessed it turned out the way it has. I never thought it would be this hard to stand in front of you today and realize this could be the last time we are all together as the Fredonia class of 2011. As we go our separate ways, we can never forget the days we spent at FHS. We have to remember the little things that were once the most important things to us. Who can forget racing to the lobby each morning to make sure you had a seat on the famous benches or making sure you were at the front of the lunch line on Hillbilly Salad Day, and then sitting at the senior table in the cafeteria. Some of us have been together now for the last 13 years. Others have joined us along the way. And while one day we thought popped collars and sequins belts were the only thing that mattered, what we didn't know is the connection we are all making with each other along the way. While we proved that on the very exciting, nerve-wracking, and probably one of the loudest bus rides home from Cedar Point, that our school has ever seen. We showed that it didn't matter who you hang out with or what you spend your weekends doing. We came together as one group of young adults and proved we are the senior class of FHS. Even though some of us may show it more than others, we all have that hillbilly pride deep down. Fortunately for us, we have been able to show our hillbilly pride the most times in school history this past football season. It wasn't just history in the making for the school and the players, but it was for all of us. In 20 years, we can still walk into our gym and see that banner on the wall and say, that was my senior year and I was there. In the end, it's not about the number of breaths you take, but the moments that take your breath away. It's been quite the roller coaster ride these last four years. We started out as the nervous freshmen who were afraid to cheer at the pep rallies because we thought we wouldn't be cool. We turned into the somewhat confident sophomores because we were no longer the youngest and we felt we had some power in this school. 184 short school days later, we were officially upperclassmen as we became juniors, as we were open-minded and clearly did not have a clue just how hard chemistry was going to be, or even how many times we would have to sit through the SATs. Together, we all made it through. As we walked into school on September 7th this past fall, we walked in as the very confident, excited, anxious young adults that we have grown into today. As we sit here one last time together, we can proudly think of what it was like to be part of the very unique senior class. I think it is safe to say that we have been the only class to create a dress code containing Sweater Vest Tuesday, V-neck Thursday, and the very famous Jersey Friday. No matter where life takes us in our future, we will always be connected through where we have come from. This will forever be our graduating class, and no one can take that away from us. We can't cry because it's over, we have to smile because it happened, and we will forever have the memories. Ready or not, we must move on and go our separate ways, but we shouldn't look at this as a goodbye, because goodbyes are forever. This is more of a see you later. I wish you the best of luck with your future. You will all be missed. Congratulations, class of 2011. I would also like to say on behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of your accomplishments. Always remember Fredonia fondly. Also, congratulations to all the parents, 
family members, friends, and our outstanding staff. Together we have made it to this day. But more importantly, be happy in, anything that, in everything that you do. At this time, it is my pleasure and privilege to award high school diplomas to the members of the class of 2011. Will Mr. Hirschbeck and Mr. Mahalik please introduce the graduates? Colby Robert Adamovich. Erica A. Arald. Victoria Christine Bannock. David John Black III. Zachary Jacob Brooks. Monica Helen Buck. Tyler Joseph Buckley. Gregory Brown Burroughs. Michael James Burroughs. Amber N. Campaign. Chad Michael Carlson. Evan Charles Carmelo. Zachary James Cash. A special recognition for Zachary. He had perfect attendance from kindergarten through 12th grade. Matthew Ryan Chan. Jacob D. Christopher. Kevin Joseph Civiletto. Catherine E. Clear. Robert Anthony Canaguglia III. Max Frederick Crinan. Mackenzie Ann Christ. Daniel Christopher Kachia Jr. Caitlin Marie Cunningham. Alex W. Chikowski. Olivia Faye Danielson. Sophia Dopaiti. Sophia spent the year here as an exchange student from the Netherlands. Today we say farewell to Sophie. Jacob Alexander Dulski. Monica W. Dunst. Monica has completed her New York State graduation requirements in three years. Delia Ivelisse Arazzo. Alexandria M. Farrell. Nicole S. Faso. Joshua Michael Foster.
Nicole Lynn Franklin. Brianna Lynn Garland. Alyssa Morgan Goot. Christopher R. Green. Anne Marie Elaine Griffith. Nicholas Ryan Haskin. James C. Hobbs. Jamie Lee Horch. Alex M. Ippolito. Vincent Andrew Ippolito. Sebastian N. Jimenez. Matthew R. Kessler. Emily Ann King. Spencer A. Keppel. Brett W. Colasa. Sean Patrick Korzenski. Christopher John Kowaleski, Jr. Stephanie Ray Kowarko. Caitlin R. Kabasak. Alyssa Lynn Ladulce. Crystal Ariel Lorenzo. Kaylin Lother. Rachel Martina Ludwig. Harrison F. Martinez. Eric James Massoud. Ryan Graham McCormick. Matthew Scott Meredith. Colin Elliott Miller. Kara Noel Mansour. David Randall Moore. Caitlin Olivia Muldowney. Christopher James Malkin. Zachary J. Nakula. Rose Marie O'Connell. Ashley Marie Odebrowski. Diane Elizabeth Oros. Hannah Jean Marie Pickering. Emily Ann Mariah 
Pleszewski. Carly B. Polisoto. Sterling E. Pratt. Lewis Robert Pulsey. Sarah Kylie Putnam. Brooke Elizabeth Reading. Parker Daniel Reininger. Brandon M. Rankins. Brandon Michael Reynolds. Jennifer L. Ringler. Kelsey Ray Rufino. Tyler Jeffrey Sam. Jared James Sasso Kane. Cody Allen Schrader. Vincent R. S. Cienza. Kyle Robert Scudder. Joshua David Seekings. Mackenzie Rachel Sheldon. Jordan Gregory Sherlock. Christopher J. Shoemaker. Alexis Nicole Schuler. Ashley Nicole Skelly. Shane Ryan Smith. Matthew John Stonefoot. Nathaniel A. Story. <laughs> Kayla Danielle Sullivan. Jessica Lynn Swoyer. Ashley Nicole Shalkowski. Alexander S. Tat. Brian C. Tat. Kenna Lynn Thompson. (laughs) 
Brandon H. Tomkowitz. Jonathan George Topchek. Olivia Rose Trippy. Brandon Scott Tweedy. Luis Antonio Velasquez, Jr. Daniel David Witcher. Tiffany M. Wise. Benjamin M. Woods. Aaron Teresa Yelich. Raven Nancy Zadie. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the class of 2011. Candidates, please rise. <laughs> the faculty and administration of the Fredonia Central School District have verified that you have successfully completed the prescribed course of high school study for the state of New York. Therefore, by the power invested in me by the state of New York and the Board of Education, I hereby award you a high school diploma. You may cross your tassels. Please be seated. Thank you. Members of the Board of Education, parents, Principal Crandall, Dean of Students Mahalik, honored guests, and fellow graduates. It is an honor and privilege to stand before you today as the graduating class of 2011 prepares to bark on a new journey, life beyond the walls of Verdonia High School. Many of us have been together since kindergarten and for the past 13 years walked through the hall only to see the same faces every day. Students have come and gone, however, our stay in cozy and quaint little Verdonia has been comfortable to say the least. Today is a bittersweet celebration. As we should all be proud of our accomplishments, we must also ready ourselves to begin our lives as independent young adults. Together we stand, tassels turned, united as a class, but you cannot escape or sugarcoat the truth. Once we walk out those doors and leave today's ceremonies, some of us will never have the opportunity to see each other again. You will stay in contact with some but others you will soon drift apart from. However, we will forever be connected. What I say comes from my heart, which in some way or another has been touched by all of you, my classmates who sit before me today. Whether or not you have cultivated a relationship with each of your classmates, they have affected you. Our words, 
Our actions, our successes, and our failures have shaped us into the people we are today, but in turn have impacted our peers as well. We are influenced by the people who surround us. We've learned and grown from each other's mistakes. The future brings uncertainty. However, it is the confidence we find in ourselves as individuals that helps steer us in the right direction. A little piece of each and every one of us, a memory, a quirky saying, an image, leaves with you today. We are the foundation to each other's character. We have helped mold each other into the young men and women who graduate today. Although this is the last time we may all be together, we will always be together in spirit. And I know I will always remember the class of 2011. As I was writing this speech, one song in particular came to mind, For Good from the musical production Wicked. So I'd like to leave you with this quote. It well may be that we will never meet again in this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made from what I've learned from you. You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart. And no matter where our stories may end, I know you have all rewritten mine by being my friend. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2011. <laughs> <laughs>